<laughs> All right. Um, what, what you're seeing now on the uh, screen here is a screenshot of Psalm 150 in the Geneva Bible. <clears throat> uh, years ago, um, I've forgotten John something was the president of Abilene Christian University and one of our one of our members was a big contributor or something and so uh John I can't I can't remember what John's last name was but this president of the university gave this uh wealthy member a photographic facsimile copy of the Geneva Bible and this person really didn't have any use for it, so he came to me with a great big huge Geneva Bible and said, would you like to have this? And I said, absolutely I would. So <clears throat> anyway, I've now got it, and this is, uh, this is the, on the little Elmo thing here, <clears throat> Psalm 150. Get your Bible out and let's do a little comparison. This is uh, Geneva Bible from 1560. About uh, 71 years before the King James. <clears throat> so, praise ye God in his sanctuary. Pretty close to what you've got. Praise ye him in the firmament of his power. What does yours say, Jeremiah? Away. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Okay, yeah. that, that's better than firmament. Yeah. Okay, chapter verse two. Praise ye him in his mighty acts. Praise ye he h i according to his excellent greatness. Praise ye him in the sound of the trumpet. Praise ye him upon the viola and the harp. <clears throat> See, this is uh, probably real similar, but it's got some antiquated spellings and uh, anti antiquated uh, uh, ways of doing things there. Now, what I wanted to do here is I, I had tried to share this with you in another form, but <clears throat> what arrested me when I saw this when I was studying the instrumental music thing, is the footnote that the Geneva uh, Bible translators had out beside this. And I think maybe you can see it a little better here. It says in this Psalm 150, exhorting ye people only to rejoice in praising God, he maketh mention of these instruments, which by God's commandment, see these instruments, which by God's commandment were appointed in the old law, but under Christ, the use thereof is abolished in the church. The use thereof is abolished in the church. So I found that very interesting that John Calvin and the people in, or the English translators in Geneva, clearly said that these instruments were commanded in the old law for use in the temple, but the use thereof is abolished in the church. 1560. Who has a, a favorite passage you'd like to see um, what it says in the Geneva Bible? Wow. Psalms 119, 119, yeah. one. Psalms 119. Let's see, 115. They're all in Roman numerals, so it's going to take me a minute. Psalms 118. This has got to be it here. Yeah. 
Oh, I see where it is. Yeah, I see where it is. Let's see here. There it is. Let's get a little closer. <clears throat> All right. Blessed are those that are upright in their way, W-A-I-E, and walk in the law of ye Lord. What does yours say there, Patty, in your Bible? Yeah, if you ask me about a passage, be sure you've got your Bible open. <laughs> How blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. All right. That are upright in their ways. Look, what does verse 2 say? How blessed are those who observe his testimonies, who seek him with all their heart. Wow. All right. See? Pretty close, huh? Yep. Yeah. How about 1 Corinthians 13? Yeah. 1 Corinthians 13. Let's get over there. Got your St. John and your Acts and your Romans. 1 Corinthians. X I I I. Get your Bible open to it. It says. Follow after love. I guess that's love. And covet, covet spiritual gifts. And rather that ye may prophesy. Is that 13 or 14? No, that's that's 13. That sounds like 14. No, it is 14. I got the I got the, there. It it didn't look at look at the way it did. Um, the number 14 in Roman numerals, which I would expect it to be XIV, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's XIII. Anyway, let's go back. Oh, wow. to, that's what got me confused. All right. <clears throat> See if I can get this thing in there the way it needs to be. Here we go. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love, I am a sounding Brass, B-R-A-S-S-E, or a tinkling cymbal. And though I had the gifts of prophecy and knew all secrets and all knowledge, yea, if I had all faith to that or for that, I could remove mountains and had not love, I were nothing. Not bad. Yep. Let's go down to verse 8 here. Yeah. Feed the poor. F-E-D-E. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Uh -huh. Love doeth never fall away, though that prophecies be abolished, or the tugs cease, or knowledge vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, that then that which is in part shall be, one word, shall be abolished. Wow. What about the qualities of love? It, is. it suffereth all things, it believeth all things, it hopeth all things, it endureth all things. That's not so bad. Yeah. Now this is a this was the most popular translation, a very reputable and scholarly translation. Love suffereth long is bountiful. Love envieth not, love doeth not boast itself. It is not puffed up, it disdaineth not. It seeketh not her own things. It is not provoked to anger. It thinketh not evil. It rejoiceth not in iniquity. But rejoiceth in the truth. Anybody want to see another one? 
I'm kind of curious to see if it being the product of um, kind of a Calvinistic theology, if it's altered some of the verses, such as like Galatians chapter 5, verse 4. Let's check that out. Galatians is after Corinthians, isn't it? Yep. yep. 2 Corinthians, Galatians chapter 5. For I, this is verse 3. Let's see. For I testify again to every man which is circumcised that he is bound to keep the whole law. You are abolished from Christ, whosoever are in who whosoever are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Not bad. Yeah, the the people were in Geneva, the exiles from England England, but you know, I've always heard that the NIV is supposed to be Calvinistic, but I've never found that to be the case. Yeah. Anybody want to see another one? Well, I was hoping to see like a textual variant issue like uh, Acts chapter 8. All right, let's check out Acts chapter 8. Of course, this one's going to be based on pretty much the Textus Receptus, I'm pretty sure, but let's check it out. Acts chapter 8. Let's go down to verse 37. See if we can zoom in a little bit. Hmm, that's better. As they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water, what doeth let me to be baptized? And Philip said unto him, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. Then he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Look at this word here. And as soon, as soon, as, as soon as they were come up out of the water, A-S-S-O-N-E. Cool. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Anybody else? Mm. No. Uh, what about the first psalm? The first palm. Palm, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Before we go to the first psalm, how about... Let's see here. How about a passage out of First Esdras? Do you want First Esdras? Holy cow, really? Yeah. Second Esdras, how about a passage out of Judah? Or the wisdom of Solomon? Or Sirach? Or First Mac? It has all that in it? Yeah, so did the King James. Of 1611. That's right. Let's go back to the palms. Let's see here. Job, the Psalms of David. Blessed is the man that doeth not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. 
Do you think the King James may have just taken some of the, the uh, Geneva Bible and reprinted it? Yeah. I do too. And Wycliffe's Bible. I like the way they spelled some of these words. Makes uh -huh. sense. Yep. Very interesting, huh? Let's look real quick at uh, first. Let's look at um, John seven fifty three to eight eleven. Oh boy. John 7, 53, 52, And they answered and said to him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee arises no prophet. And every man went to his own house. And Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning came again unto the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and set her in the midst, and said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. What sayest thou therefore? And this they say to tempt him, that they might have whereof to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. And while they continued asking him, he lift himself up and said unto them, let him that is among you without sin cast the first stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And when they heard it, being accused by their own conscience, they went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even to the, le the last. So Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lift up himself again and saw no man but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither. Where are we? Neither. Nope. We got to come over. Nope. We're, we got to go further. Here we go. Neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. So, pretty much the same as King James. <clears throat> Anybody else? All right, so Geneva Bible, by far the most popular English Bible for, for many years up until the time of the King James. Oh, yeah, the guy's name was John C. Stevens. He was the president of the Abilene Christian. Facts in with 1560 edition. So the president of Abilene Christian had a Geneva Bible and said, yeah, I don't want it. He gave it to, no, he, he, he just thought it was a very nice, expensive gift to give to this donor. And it oh. was. But the donor didn't have the same appreciation for it that maybe some other people did. All right, so a couple of other facts <laughs> that I needed to get exactly right uh, with you. This is from... The uh, translators to the readers from the King James Bible. This would be a really good little book for you to have or a little copy of it, whether in digital form or in, in uh, written form. This is the translators to the reader, preface to the King James of 1611, edited by 
Edgar J. Goodspeed. What is with the sound? Translators to the Readers, preface to the King James Version of 1611, edited by Edgar J. Goodspeed. Now, in the little document here, it's Chicago University Press. If you go to the back of it, they have the actual facsimile, photographic facsimile of the, ori of the original translators to the readers in, in the Elizabethan English. <clears throat> but it's very difficult to read. So Goodspeed has put this in modern English for us. Exactly what's said, just in the words that we use now. And uh, he, has, he has put it in here before, and I've read it and underlined some passages, and it's interesting. Okay. Uh, here. One of the things that I think is interesting, this is Goodspeed's notes before we get into the translation. You're cutting up a lot. What's that? You're cutting up a lot. It's hard to understand anything. I don't know if you it's mean, our connection. You mean the sound is cutting out? Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yes. Uh-oh. So is it any better now or not? Yes. Right this moment. Yeah. Oh. Can you hear me now? No. Huh. No, if it's breaking up again. Okay, we're going to have to disconnect and reconnect. Yeah. 